Let's make a slide with daily interaction number five. Hey, what's up everyone? John with WebDev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Today we're gonna build a slider with a text reveal. So here as I go through each slide, we have, oops, uh, yeah, we have text revealing. All right, so this can be a great way to showcase uh, content on your site. You can have an image, you can have text to go with the image, and then you can focus the user's attention on the text by having it reveal. All right, looks good. So first we're gonna build the slider and then we're gonna add the interaction, the text reveal interaction. So to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is five and then the element. So every element on the site will have a D-5 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes and so that we know we're working with daily interaction number five. All right, so here the first thing I'll do is I'll add a section. So I'll add an element. I'll add a section and I'll give it the class name D-5 section. For the height, I'll set it to 100 VH. So it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Then I'll scroll down to the background. I'll give it a background color of black and I'll scroll up to display setting and set it to flux and horizontal and justify center and align center. So anything I place within the section will be in the center. All right, so now we can add the slider. So here I'll add an element. I'll scroll down to components uh, right here and I'll select a slider. All right, so there we have the slider. I'm gonna give it the class name D-5 slider. All right, and then for the width, I'm gonna set, set it to 80%, uh, not 80 pixels, uh, 80%. Uh, so that yeah, no matter how wide the screen gets, the slider will always be 80% in width within the, the viewport of the screen. All right, so looks good. So now let's take a, a quick look at the structure of the slider. Uh, this is gonna be important to helping us build the entire, um, all the elements for the slider. Uh, so here we have D-5 slider, we're in the navigator. And if I open it, uh, here, here are what makes up the slider. So we have the mask, we have the left arrow, we have the right arrow, and we have the slide nav. So here, if I open up the mask, we see slide one and slide two. I'm gonna go ahead and delete slide two uh, because the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add all the elements we need to slide one and then we're gonna copy and paste to save a, a bit of time. Um, so here I have slide one selected. So I'll go into the styles and I'll give it the class name D-5 slide. All right, so what I would want to do here is place some text in the center. So for the slide, I would want to give it a flex property of flex and set it to center center. Uh, so let's try to do that really uh, real quick. Um, so here, if I try to set up, try to apply a flex setting, it says disabled to preserve slider functionality. If you need a different display setting for slider content, add a div block and style it instead. Um, so yeah, we can't add a flex property to the slide. So we need to add a div block and then fill uh, make that div block the same size as the slide, and then we can apply a flex property. So here I'll add an element, I'll add a div block, and I'll give it the class name D-5 slide wrapper. And for this, I'll go down to position, set it to a position of absolute, and I'll set it to full so it fills the entire slide. All right, and now I can go up to the display setting, set it to flex, set it to horizontal, uh, justify center, and align center. So anything I place within this wrapper will be in the center. So now what I'm gonna do is add another div block. So I'll add an element, 
I'll add a div block and I'll name this D-5 uh, slide or let's see, uh, text wrapper. Yeah, text wrapper. Um, so the text is going to go in here. And for this text wrapper, we're going to set an overflow here, uh, right here for this option, we're going to set it to hidden. So this is what's going to help us create the text reveal effect. Um, because this text wrapper has an overflow of hidden, we're going to place the text inside of it, and we're going to move the text down, and we're not going to see anything outside of the text wrapper. So we won't see that text, and then we'll have that text move, uh, move up. All right, so it'll move down initially, and um, it won't be visible because um, the wrapper has an overflow of hidden, and then we'll move it, we'll move it up. All right, so there's the text wrapper. So now I want to add the text inside of this text wrapper. So I'll add an element. I'll add a text block. And I'll name this D-5 uh, slide text. All right, and I'll double click and I'll rename this to joy. Um, you can enter any text you want for this. Um, I'm just doing like one liner so we have a nice text reveal. Um, and then for the typography, um, I'll change it here. I'll select circular bold. I'll set the font weight to bold, and I'll change the color to black for the text. I'll give it a font size of, let's do 54, and the line height of, let's say 70. All right, perfect. So there I have the text, it's in the center. And the last thing we need to do for the slide is add a background image. So here I'll go into the navigator, and I'll select D-5 slide, so we can add a background image to the slide. I'll go back to styles, and I'll go down to background. I'll add a background image. I'll choose an, uh, choose an image, and I've already uploaded these images to Webflow. So I'll select this one here. I'll set it to a background size of cover, uh, position it, let me try the center. I'm gonna do position top here, uh, so we can see the birds a bit better within the slideshow, or the slider. And I don't need it to be tiled, so I'll say none for tiled. And that's it. So there we have the slide. We have all the components we need uh, for the slide. So now what I can do is go into the navigator. Here I have D-5 slide. I can hit Command C to copy, and then Command V to paste, and Command V to paste again. So I have three slides. So I'm just going to do three slides for this example. All right, so there we have it. We have three slides. They all have the same text and the same image. We probably, let me just, oh. Uh, not sure why um, that was showing up there, but yeah, we'll just continue. Um, so yeah, let's go back and I'll change the um, the text for each slide. So here in the navigator, I want to open uh, open each slide until I can access the text. And then once I uh, have access to the text, I'll click on it, double click, and rename this to Serenity. All right, then I'll go into the third slide and select the text, double click, and I'll call this love. All right, so now if I preview, we have, uh, yeah, joy, uh, serenity, and love. Perfect, so now we want to change the background image for each slide. So for this, I'll select the second slide, we'll go into styles, and I'll give it a combo class of two. All right, by giving it a combo class, we can now apply individual properties to this specific slide. So now I'll go to the background, um, I'll click on the image, and I'll click on replace image. And here I'll select this image. Looks good, and that's all I have to do there. Then I'll go to the third slide, select D-5 slide, give it a combo class of three to apply individual properties to it. Then I'll click on the image, replace image, and I'll select this image here. All right, and that's it. So we have all the elements we need for the slide. So we have joy, serenity, and love. And they each have a different image and different text. So now we can add the interaction. So here, what I want to do is go into the navigator. I'll select the D-5 slide, the first one. I'll go into interactions. And this is gonna be an element trigger. So here I'll click the plus symbol. And because it's a slider, we now have this option that says slider. So I'll select it here. And we have a couple of options here. We can do slider in view. So when the slide comes into view and we can add an animation when the slide goes out of view. So let me start with slider in view. So I'll start an animation. I'll add a new timed animation. So I'll click the plus here and I'll call this D-5 slide. Yes, yeah, slide in. 
All right, so this is what's going to occur when the slide comes in. So what I want to happen initially is I want that text to not be visible. So I'm going to set it to 100% on the Y axis, and then I'm going to bring it back up to 0% so it reveals. All right, so for this, I want to affect the text. So I'll go into the navigator. I'll select D-5 slide text. Go back into the interaction. I'll add a new time to action. I'll say move. And on the Y, here we can move it on the X, Y, or Z. I'm going to move it on the Y so it moves vertically. And I'll enter in 100%. So notice we don't see it, and that's because the text wrapper has an overflow of hidden, so we don't see anything outside of it. All right, and I do want this to be the initial state, so it's not initially visible. So right next to timing, I'm going to set it as the initial state. Then I'll add another time to action, so I'll say move. And for this, I'm going to move it back to 0% on the Y axis, so it goes back to its original position. And for the easing, I'll set it to ease out expo. I'm going to add a delay of 0.5 and a duration of 1. So let me quickly show why, why I'm adding a delay of 0.5. So here, if I go back into the navigator and I select the D-5 slide, I can go into the element settings. And here we have the slider settings. So here we can change the animation type. We can cho choose a few different ones here. We can change the easing of how the slide comes in. Um, so yeah, you can choose a few different easings. And you can change the duration. So right now the slide has a duration of 500 milliseconds. So that means it takes 500 milliseconds for the slide to come in. So what I want to occur um, is that I want the slide to come in first and then the text to reveal. So 500 milliseconds for the slide to come in. And that's why I added a 0.5 delay to the text. So after it comes in, then the text will reveal. All right, so you can play with all these options. I just kind of want to want to go over it so that, um, yeah, you can kind of customize the slider how you would uh, like. All right, so let me go back into the interaction. I'll go into the slider interaction and looks good. So let's preview really quick. So if I preview, we see the text comes up. So let's see if it's happening for the other ones, and it's not. So the only one that has it is um, is Joy initially. So actually, yeah, let's add the slider out interaction. So let's close this. And for slider out of view, let's start an animation. And I'll duplicate the slide in. So I'll click on these three dots. I'll select duplicate. I'll select slide in two and click on it. And then I'll rename it here to D-5 slide out. And for this one, we only need uh, a timed action for the uh, text to go down. And the reason we, we want it to go down when it exits is so that when it comes back in, it starts from that position. So for this, I'm going to delete the second timed action. And we have the D-5 slide text. And it's already set to 100%, so that's all good. Um, so for the timing, I want to uncheck this because we already set the initial timing for the slide in. So we don't need it for this for the slide out animation. And for this, I'll add an easing of ease out expo and a duration of 0.5 is OK. All right, so now let's preview. So yeah, we have joy. The second one isn't occurring or the third, but just the first. So we notice it happens again because it's starting from that position from the bottom. All right, so now we want to apply it to all the slides. So we want serenity and love to reveal as well. So this is where the power of Webflow really comes in, because not only can we affect a single element, we can affect specific classes. So we can have the same animation applied to multiple elements. Uh, so to do this, I'll go back into the D-5 slide in, and I'll select the, the D-5 slide text. And right down here, we can see it says effect, and it's only affecting the selected element. I want to affect any element that has a specific class. So here I can click the drop down and I can select class. So action will affect multiple elements with the same class. And as soon as I do that, we have the uh, subcategory that says all elements with this class. Um, so what what this is yeah what what uh, what this is basically saying is uh, any element with D-5 slide text will have the animation applied to it. But this isn't exactly what we want because we can't see the text on slide two or slide three. So they would animate, but we wouldn't see it. 
what we want to do is target a specific text of a specific slide. So as we go to each slide, then the animation occurs. So we can actually do that. So right here, instead of all elements with this class, we can select only children with this class. So action will affect only the elements inside, inside the interaction trigger. And that is exactly what, what we want. The slide, the D-5 slide is the interaction trigger and the text is a child element of that interaction trigger. So only that one will animate, all right? So I'll select only children with this class and I'll kind of showcase this a bit better. So I'll go to the navigator. So this is the D-5 slide and it's the interaction trigger. And we know it is because it has the green circle with the, uh, the interaction symbol or the lightning bolt. So it is an interaction trigger. And right here it is the D-5 slide text and it's inside of it. So we know it's a child element of it. So only this specific text will be triggered or, or, or will animate, all right? So, the other thing we notice is that these, uh, the second and third slide, they don't have an interaction. They're not an interaction trigger. Only this first one is. So we want to go back into the interactions and I'll close this here and write down here for trigger settings, rather than trigger a specific element or the selected element, I want to trigger a class. All right. So any element that has the D five slide class will be triggered. All right, so trigger on all elements with the same class. So now if I go back to the navigator, we notice that slide one, slide two, and slide three, they're all interaction triggers. And because they all have the D-5 slide text inside of them, they're only gonna target that child element within each slide, all right? So hopefully this is all making sense. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to discuss or answer any questions. All right, so looks good. Um, so now the last thing we need to do, let me go back into the interaction. And yeah, so the last thing we would need to do is go into the slide out and select the slide text. And rather than affecting the selected element, we're gonna, going to affect the class and only children with this class. So the same thing we did with slide in, we want to apply it to slide out as well. And that's it. Uh, that's all we have to do. And now when I preview, we have joy, serenity, lo uh, love, and so on and so on. So I can go to each, sli each slide and it will reveal. All right, so we just saved a lot of time in Webflow by targeting specific classes and children elements of specific classes. Um, and we applied the same animation to multiple slides with just a few clicks. Uh, so that is the power of Webflow. It's amazing um, and yeah you could do so much with this effect uh, you could have paragraphs or you know these are just one words but just one word uh, these are only one word uh, but yeah you could do a lot of different things with this or reveal different things and even have different animation you could have it come in from the left top right bottom um, simply by changing the location within the interaction all right, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction number five, uh, creating a slider with a text reveal. Um, so I scaled these uh, next previous and next buttons in the demo. Um, I might go over that in another daily interaction. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.